I'd heard about this place, so we bundled the children into the car and headed off to Wallumbai, which is about two hours' drive from Sydney. And before I knew it, I was on a very steep hill, got bogged, and the children were screaming in the back, and I thought, where have I come to? On the map, Nunamina is mentioned as a shed. And it does give you that impression, but when you open the door, you realise that gradually the house had been added to by the young couple who had made it a home. I think it was built at the end of the 70s and the young couple separated and then it went on the market and my friend Judy bought it with friends. From my bed, I can look out in the morning through the window and all you see is the bush and the mist rising. So that is very special. The other special thing is a boombox belonging to my daughter. It's now 25 years old and it still works. And I jump around late at night with cassettes from the 80s and CDs from the 90s. As for children, I brought them up finally only a year ago because they were really very small. They love being taken on bushwalks and they're astounded at the beauty of the bush. And their father showed them how to whittle the stick into a spear. And with the sticks, they maraud around the bush, standing on the rocks, pretending to be hunters. Bruce doesn't take the chocolate box kind of photographs that everyone else does. He finds something specific that has caught his attention. And we often just sit there and we talk about the colours from minute to minute and the shadows in the leaves, the silhouettes that are forming as the light fails. On the night of December the 6th, 2019, I could see the line was about 200 metres from our property boundary and said goodbye to everything in the house one by one because I knew it was going to burn. Our neighbours clearly came to our house because you can see where the line stopped a metre from our barbecue gas tank. Everything was just so close and it had miraculously stopped. So someone was there, but we cannot find who they are. They won't own up. Generally, Wallumbai is in a rain shadow, so heavy rainfall is fortunately not a big issue. So I don't think we had the erosion or the loss of the ash and the goodness that it can bring to the plants. The fire stimulated all the seeds and then the precious rain started to fall. A dry property was transformed into a botanic garden. The dam is not that important to us because we don't want to swim in it. We have tried to just make the property a place for native animals and birds and we want to protect all the species, especially in dry times. We've got lyrebirds, forest kingfisher, gangang cockatoos, big goanna marauds around the house trying to get in. 
There are kangaroos in the valley, eastern greys. They don't come near our house, but you can hear them at night, so they're very shy. This property has a lot of caves and rocks, and I'm sure it was very important to the Daruk people, and it could have been the Dakinjung people as well. So the rocks are very special, and on the top you have a marvellous view of all the valley below. And along the way we find the flannel flowers, The flannel flowers are so delicate and they used to just be limited to a very small area, but after the fire, they're now growing in an area near the rocks. This is a very special place. I love it. I can wander around with my Sydney Regional Plant Guide and now identify probably a hundred different plants, which I was not not that interested in before. If fire came, I would rebuild the house and I would try to fireproof the house. And the good thing that we've seen now is that fire can be a regenerative process and not everything is destroyed. It's not suitable for grazing animals and I will insist that it be kept for the native flora and fauna and I will do everything I can to preserve it.